Hi everyone, if you've been watching all my videos, you probably know that there are many potential triggers of lupus. The signs and symptoms of lupus vary and mimic other illnesses. There is no one cause of lupus and there is no cure for lupus. So in terms of diagnosis, I'm sure you must have guessed that there is no one way to diagnose lupus. Hi everyone, I'm Priyashni and in this video you'll find information on how lupus is diagnosed. For more videos on lupus, its symptoms and triggers, please hit the red subscribe button below. I've read that it could take an average of 6 years to get a lupus diagnosis. You'd wonder why. An average of 6 years is a long time to not know what you're suffering from. Leaving lupus untreated for this long could lead to complications, or worse, could lead to one's demise. I feel when we first start getting lupus symptoms, a lot of time is spent on self-diagnosis, figuring out and ruling out possibilities like, is it all just in my head? Am I really just exaggerating my symptoms? But I'm in my 20s, how can I get swelling and joint pain? Could it just be work-related stress or that breakup? Should I change my diet? Can exercise fix this? Maybe yoga can? Am I hallucinating and imagining pain all over my body? Is this some kind of black magic going on? Maybe I should just try home remedies first. I think it's quite natural to have this kind of thoughts. If we are not self-diagnosing, I'm sure one of our relatives would do this for us. But we're just wasting time. Lupus mimics other illnesses. So often we could be too busy connecting our symptoms to some illness we've heard or know about. Again, wasting time and delaying diagnosis of lupus. For example, if you strongly believe that you are fatigued, getting joint pain, swelling, hair loss due to depression. If you are convinced that you are depressed, then it is highly likely that you will neglect everything else and pick and tell signs and symptoms of depression to your doctor. Because that's what you can relate to, that's what makes sense to you. And then most certainly you'll be directed to a psychiatrist, not a physician or a rheumatologist and could end up with antidepressants rather than immunosuppressants. The doctors won't magically know what signs or symptoms you had neglected. They too rely on what you tell them. So I'd say be careful on what spin you put on your story. This could be one of the reasons why the doctors do not even think of testing you for lupus, because of the way we tell the doctors about the signs and symptoms, which could just be a specific illness that we think that we are suffering from. Hence another reason to be aware of this autoimmune lupus condition so that we can know that lupus is an invisible illness that can hide behind symptoms of other illnesses. On the contrary, ignorance is bliss. This was true for me back in 2007 during my own lupus diagnosis. I had never fallen sick before. I didn't quite actually know about any other illnesses. So I never made any connection. I never did any self-diagnosis. I did not lead the doctors to believe what I thought was wrong with me. And I feel that really helped my doctors to make a lupus diagnosis in less than seven months. It is also not uncommon that sometimes doctors don't listen to what you have to say. You have this gut feeling and you know your symptoms don't make sense. But sometimes the doctors don't believe you and they only treat your symptoms rather than the underlying autoimmune condition. With lupus, you cannot actually blame anyone. There is a high chance of misdiagnosis due to the very nature of lupus condition, it being complicated, multifaceted, systemic, great imitator of other illnesses, autoimmune, invisible, unclear and overlapping symptoms. I feel we may be able to help in lupus diagnosis only if we are aware of lupus beforehand. Therefore, awareness, awareness and more awareness is needed on lupus. Moving on, so how exactly do doctors make this lupus diagnosis? It is said that no one test can diagnose lupus. Therefore, a combination of blood test, urine test, physical examination, signs and symptoms, your medical history, your family medical history, severity of the condition, etc. are evaluated for a lupus condition. These present their own challenges. For instance, blood test results can be positive and the next time around it can be negative or vice versa. 
different labs could produce different results. Lupus symptoms vary and change over time. For instance, when the disease is active, you'll have a lot more symptoms. But when disease is in remission, you will hardly have any symptom. Physical examination, like signs of inflammation. Those on the outside can be easily seen, like swelling or redness. But inflammation can also occur inside of your body. Some lupus sufferers have visible rash, while others don't. The test results, reviews and evaluations involve different departments and specialists, like your general practitioner, dermatologist, urologist, uh, rheumatologist, physicians. Sometimes these information are shared on a centralized database, while other times these are subject to privacy and confidential flaws. It appears it may not be possible to make a lupus diagnosis over a very short span of time. The doctors would usually want to see a trend. Each test result, each analysis and evaluation over a period of time would add information to the bigger picture of what you could be suffering from. I think this answers the question as to why it takes years to make a lupus diagnosis. A professional association of rheumatologists called the American College of Rheumatology has come up with a list of 11 common criteria or measures to help doctors diagnose lupus. If you have at least 4 out of 11 criteria on the list, whether they are all present at once or sometime in the past, then there is a high chance that you could have lupus. Here's a list of 11 common criteria or measures. Number 1. Butterfly rash 2. Discoid rash 3. Photosensitivity 4. Oral or nasal ulcers 5. Arthritis 6. Cirrhositis 7. Kidney disorder 8. Neurological disorder 9. Blood disorder 10. Immunologic disorder and 11 positive antinuclear antibody test result at the time of my diagnosis out of these 11 common criteria i had number three for the sensitivity i didn't get skin rash but i would tan red like really red every time i was exposed to direct sunlight number five during my diagnosis in a span of a couple of months i had swollen stiff painful fingers frozen shoulder, a swollen knee and a swollen foot. Number 9, for sure I was anemic. Number 10 and number 11, anti-DNA and positive ANA uh, in my blood test results. So 4 out of 11 and you would pass the lupus test and I had 5 out of 11. This has to be the only test I regret having passed. These 11 common criteria or measures have surely made it easy to confirm lupus, but there could be a gap of at least 6 years between your first symptom to these 11 criteria or measures. Is there a way to shorten the gap? The quicker we can diagnose lupus, the higher the chance of managing lupus condition and living a fulfilling life. The quicker we can diagnose lupus, the lesser the chance of having lupus complications and say medical bills. But how do we get a quick diagnosis? The doctors are not looking to find lupus in every patient that presents signs or symptoms of lupus. Lupus diagnosis is resource consuming and a time consuming process. So what can you do to help the doctors to at least consider the possibility of lupus? I hope you can find some answers in my videos as I take you through my own lupus experience. Trust me when I say, my lupus journey is no walk in the park. You'll only know once you hear my story. I'm committed to raising awareness on lupus because, because I don't want anyone else to go through what I went through in the last 13 years. I consider myself very blessed to be alive and to share my story. So please, come join me on my lupus journey. Till my next video, take care and thanks for watching.